Yeah, Vinny, um, a quick turnaround. Obviously, you've got to try and move on from Wednesday. What, what's your message to the players as, as you look to bounce back um, ahead of what looks like a, an important November? I think every game you've got to put yourself back in a, a frame of mind where <clears throat> you believe that you, you're going to produce a performance that get you the result. And um, I think sometimes a quick turn, turnaround is not, not such a bad thing. So um, I think since yesterday, it's been full focus on Crystal Palace and, and hopefully giving a, a good Premier League moment to, to our fans. Yeah, Saturday sees the youngest Premier League manager go up against the oldest. Roy Hodgson was very complimentary about yourself on, on, on Thursday. Do you see yourself getting past the, the 400 game career landmark like he did recently? Uh, what's your view going into Saturday's game? I don't know, but I looked a little bit obviously as, at his history as a coach and you see, you know, started in the 70s, I think, and then went through so many countries, so many leagues. So in terms of experience as well, it's a different type of experience than if you say just in one country. And so he's, um, he's a man with, with knowledge of the world and, and you bring that into your management style, of course. And, I can I can I can see I can see I can see why he's still doing it. You know I can see the passion in him. I I'm lucky to have a, a father who's around the same age and and still still just as active as as I, as I see Roy Hodgson at the moment. And and yeah, I think all of us wish to to be as as healthy and energetic at at his age. Sure. Uh, just rewinding briefly, uh, Vinny, back to the the Bournemouth game, the controversy surrounding VAR, the Jay Rodriguez disallowed goal. Has there been any talks uh, between yourself, the club, and, and, and the games authorities, PGMOL, about, about what happened, the fact that it took them five minutes to then agree with the original on-field decision? And yeah. what, are you, what are your thoughts on where we're at right now with it? Yeah, look, for me, I have to put the game behind me as well a little bit because I can go back through the season and, and I, you know, I don't want to constantly be putting ourselves in a victim situation. I think that the, one of the positive things I have to... Uh, highlight is that there are open conversations so we we do voice our opinion we don't always agree but at least there's a discussion and 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 there's a way to 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 maybe change some perspectives as well um and look at this moment in time it's it's been it's been a succession of events that that we could have done without but we have to move on and and focus on the next game and and, and make sure that we we get what we um what we're out there to do every weekend and we get the, the rewards um, tomorrow. Sure. And, and, and JJ Watt has, has, has given an interview this week. Vinny. He used the word frustrating, but also the need to bounce back. It looks like a, a united effort to try and get this first home win of, of the season in the Premier League and, and you know use that as a launch pad going forwards. Yeah, look, I, I, JJ is someone that I speak to as well and and um, he's a former <laughs> elite athlete in a different sport, but... You know, when when you're in sports, you know, and when you get to the level he's got to you, you know, when you go to t in, through through difficult times. And I want to put things into perspective because, obviously, historically in the Premier League, it's it's there's very few times where it's not been difficult for Burnley, right? There'd be a few highlights, but I think when you put everything into context, you you know that there's a there's a way to. To, to be in these moments, you know, there's a type of togetherness you need in these moments, a type of rallying you need from the team in these moments. And that throughout the entire season, it's a long season. And I think that, you know, an elite athlete like him will recognise these moments. And obviously um, that's that's something that, that makes sense. And um, But at the moment in time, I have to say this, um, this is something that I'm looking towards in terms of um, seeing as well you know the character we have in the team as well. It's it's a it's a good place. We we have good staff, good people. We have also um, a good team that's working through it in the way that I like. I would like to see them work through it, and that gives me confidence that um, they can level up. That's that's a mission for us. Appreciate it. Thanks. Mate. Thank you. Thanks, Morning. Mate. Stuart, okay? Morning. Okay. Morning. Um, is there any sort of um, psychological barrier to playing at home this season? W no, I, I I hope it's uh, I hope it's it, no, it, it it's a lift for us. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's always been massive. Um, Roy Hodgson's first job in management was ten years before you were born, and he's still going at <laughs> seventy six. Um, can, um, you know, it's a stressful job. Can you imagine still doing it at, at that age? 
I take the example of my dad and I would say yes, but um, I, I think, you know, you have to be exceptional in the energy you have. You have to be exceptionally driven. Like he wouldn't have been allowed to drop his standards from when he started to now. And, and that's a tough ask. And I'd say as well, I think you have to be well supported. I can imagine that there must be a lot of important people in his life that have supported him throughout this and, and enabled him to to live this career to its fullest. And and in the end, it's um, it's a way of, I think when once you're a manager, once you're out there, I think it's a way of staying young because because age doesn't matter that much after all. It's um, it's it's the players. It's it's how you you transmit the energy to them, and and I think to have that longevity in doing that is 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 um, yeah, inspiring. Yeah. And just finally, for me, there's a, the final international break for a while coming up as well soon. Maybe last season that would have given you a chance to to work with players for a couple of weeks, but you've got quite a few players who are going to be away. Um, yeah. So does that give you a bit of a bit of an issue yeah I mean the international break is there's been a lot of international breaks and uh, I think in the last 12 months or something we've been used to every form of it whether it's a World Cup in in, in the winter or whether it's uh, you know three or four international breaks before the before the new year I think as well something new to it now is that um, and, and we, we, <laughs> we happen to be affected as well by by something of course that's of a much bigger scale but we've got the uh, the Kosovo versus Israel game that um, that is getting played, I think, a couple of days after our game against Arsenal. So that means that for some reason we don't have, you know, for example, Aaron Muric available for that game. And and so, yeah, the internationals nowadays have taken on, and, and I can understand the bigger picture of why that game is getting replayed and we have to find a time. But, um, yeah, the international break at the moment, it seems to have um, yeah, quite a big impact on on the way you, you, you play out your seasons, yeah. Thanks, Stuart. Mr. Bays, Radio Lights. Uh, Vincent, you've always said it's not always been easy for Burnley at this level of football, but how much more difficult is it in 2023 than it might have been in 2015? It's, it's difficult for me to compare or, or draw a comparison to the, to, to the experience of the people who were there at that time. I think it's for them to tell. But I was a player in the league at that time. And um, since I've left the league, I think four years ago, I think um, the bar has been raised considerably. And you can only see through, um, and I'm not saying it as a negative, in, in to, I'm just t saying in terms of the challenge it is. So the, the teams that we would be competing with at the moment, if, 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 we, if, we're, if we're serious about staying up, would be your Nottingham Forest. And, and I'm saying that in the most respectful way, uh, and, and maybe Bournemouth, just because they're just the next teams up from us, right, in the league. But if you look at the amount of investment that the teams at the bottom have put into their squads in the last couple of years, that wouldn't have been the case even when I left the Premier League four or five years ago. It would have been more of a cluster of teams that were, you know. And so that just means that the level is getting better, which is great for the Premier League, which is also great for us in terms of having a chance at doing it. But that means that your first year in the Premier League is probably harder than it's ever been. And um, and within that context, you can kind of imagine that it's not going to be easy, but you can, you can also imagine that if you get over the hurdle, um, hopefully you can put some distance between you and the next one coming up as well, because it's 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 about the cycles, right? About the cycles of stre strengthening your squads and, and players as well, getting real Premier League experience. With that in mind, that it's harder than it's ever been, what would the achievement of being in the Premier League next season mean to you against winning the championship so comfortably last season? Um, did you say comfortably? <laughs> it's, not, it's, it's a 46 game season. Nothing is comfortable in that season. And um, games were crammed in like never before because of a Winter World Cup. So nothing was comfortable about it. And, <laughs> and sorry, I remind you all, but we had 20 new players coming in and, and however many players we faced this season that used to be at Burnley that left the club that we had to replace in the championship. So we didn't come down like a strong championship squad like, you know, it wasn't our story. So it wasn't comfortable, but it was nice. Um, I think this season, um, 
you know, I, th I think, I think to be honest, it would be of equal order, and and the reason being because um, it's it's an it's a necessary step for the club in terms of um, I'm not going to say guaranteeing, but in terms of growing in this league. So it's it's a way. I really think that staying up is is a is a it's not just a way of saying this is what you're going to be doing for the next 10 years. I mean, staying up is a way for this club to grow into this league. I think this club can can really grow in the league. But this year is 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 by far the hardest. And I think that um, the difference there is at the moment is um, with the club. And, and I'm being completely honest and transparent here. So again, I, I'll. I'll, I'll, in a subtle way, I'll ask you to manage your headlines uh, so that I can keep, I can keep the open dialogue we have here. But the point is more: what did we try to do when we start the season? You find yourself in that middle ground now between the two divisions, where arguably you say, okay, you've probably deservedly moved on from the championship, but to say you belong in the Premier League, there's still a gap, which is normal. It's the highest level level in the world, and you find yourself in that middle zone where. I think the squad is still healthy for me in terms of uh, you can go down really strong, but you can also grow into this league and be stronger in the years to come. And I think I explained it just as transparently before we got into the heat of the Premier League to, to, to try and give you a context behind the idea. So look, we're in a position now where we will have to fight for every point, but we're not in a position, I don't think, where we're... Um, you know, we, we we have to be too surprised or panicking about anything, and and I think this transpires through the, this trans, this transpires throughout the club. You've always talked about the turf more atmosphere in your time here. Yeah. How much do you need them Saturday to be as good as they've ever been for you? Uh, we we need them every step of the way, and they've been with us every step of the way. It wasn't. I can imagine it wasn't nice for them going to Brentford and 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 and, and losing in that way, but. Yeah, I can I, I can I can see every time that we've got support behind mainly the you know for me the most important thing is is to support the lads who are on the pitch until the last minute and then and then after the game you get back together and, and, and go again and we've had tremendous support we had it in the championship last year there's been some memorable away games as well and uh, we've had it this year we, we've had it at home it's um it's it's a massive part for us and we need every every bit we can use just a final one, if I, if I may, Vincent. How do you manage players differently if you've been on a run of losing games and players come in on a Monday morning and perhaps they're not as high as they are if they're winning five in a row? Yeah. Compared to this time last year, how do you differently manage the situation? No, we, you, you, you just don't allow them to, to change their habits, change their standards. Last year, probably... You know, you lose, you win three or four in a row. That's, for me, the most nervous moment because you know that people are susceptible to, to drop the standards. Now, I think the only thing you can talk about is, is, um, is, is perhaps the word confidence. But in terms of the urgency that lives in the squad, it's, it's actually easier to, ma to, to manage now because everybody knows that they've got to absolutely put the foot on the pedal and everybody understands you know, how much is going to demand physically and mentally to get over the line by the end of the season, you know, you don't, nobody's safe now. It's at the end of the season and you've all been here for, for long enough to know that <laughs> it could be it could be as much the last minute and the last game and whatever, you know, so you have to be mentally ready for that and, and it's, it's not supposed to be easy. And, and so the only thing I want to say is then again on, on the topic of confidence, it's I think it's a mistake in, in football to to, to wait for, for confidence to come. I think you have to force your own confidence because, you know, if you're a striker, you're not always going to score goals and, and, and you're not always going to have the best, the best run of games. And so if you wait in this game for confidence to come, you just don't, you don't go anywhere. So you have to accept that it's there or not there, but you have to work at it and make sure that you put yourself in the right conditions to start a game and then trust yourself. Thanks, Andy. I'm going to pass it back to Matt. Scrafton from the Express. Hi, Vinny. Hi uh, how's uh, Lal Foster doing? Yeah, at, at the moment, it's still um, no signs of improvement. So, um, 
the only thing I can more or less say is that he is is probably not going to be available before um, before the international break, and uh, it, it just uh, it's something we have to deal with. Is that quite a serious illness more than just a, a flu, for example, or is it? No, I'm, I don't. I don't think um, I can. I can go into too much details now, but I'm sure next week we'll be able to um, to discuss it further. Uh, and Aaron Ramsey's been missing us a few weeks. What's his uh, situation? Yeah, he's, he's felt. He's felt. He's felt. He's felt, he's felt something as well. And um, they're, they're a little bit. They're not your classic hamstring pulls and quads and all this kind of stuff. We're we're just picking up knocks and we're picking up. Uh, um, twists and stuff that you know is one of the players that will probably not recover straight away either. Uh, Josh Cullen suspended for tomorrow. How big a miss will he be for you? <laughs> Played every game so far. Yeah, it's 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 the same as with Lyle and, and other players. You know, you you're kind of hoping that somebody else steps up, somebody else takes over the responsibility, and um, yeah, it's it's a fact of the game. He's not there, and we have to we have to deal with it. How much are you missing the two centre backs, Bayer and Ekdal, and how are they getting on in their recoveries? Uh, Bayer really positive, so he's been training, training well, and um, Ekdal slowly um, getting there. I I can't tell you whether he's going to be fit before the the end of the international break or not, or match fit. Let's put it this way, but it's on the right way and part of these freak injuries I can't turn around and say like you know we haven't trained them well or we you know they're, they're not the hamstring pulls or anything like this is I think Bayer had a twist of the knee Ekdal had a twist of the knee and 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 yeah they're they're affecting our season of course but um come I think more important now is we're recovering them and and hopefully we'll recover them to a very good level Andy? Yeah. yeah we'll move on Ellie Hi Vinny, obviously Hi you've had very difficult games at home so far. Coming back to Turf more now, how important is it to try and get that first home point on the board? Well, I can tell you we've tried every single game, so <laughs> it's not for a lack of trying. But um, we'll, no, it's, it's massive for us and we... We, we 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 are looking forward to play. we've not played for a while now at home as well so we are looking forward to play against in front of our fans and um and like the type of league it is you know there's no i think there's no game where you can expect but as every game where you have the opportunity and for us tomorrow we have to look at it as as an opportunity to to show to the fans you know something they've been waiting for in the premier league and how important do you think home form is, is going to be over the season in terms of your prospects of, of trying to stay in this league? I, 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 you know, I'm, I'm, a really, I'm a big believer of home advantage. So I, I do think it's, it's part of the makeup of any successful team. But then I've seen it sometimes occasionally the other way around. So the key is to believe that you can... You can get results everywhere and, and really believe that. And, and for me, being at home should always give you an advantage. Um, but the belief should be there in every game. And is Jordan Bear, could he play tomorrow? Is he There's a chance, yes. And how, how kind of big a lift would, would that be? Yeah, it, it, it would balance out a little bit on missing Cullen and Foster and, 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 and whatnot. And, but I'm, I've always been someone that trusts the, the squad so if collectively we can be at the levels then usually you can you can pick up the, the for a few individuals that you're going to be missing thank you great thank you everyone